Stats are undeniably one of the most important elements of your build and are also a bit of a hot topic in the Destiny space as of late. Today I wanted to talk about all three of the stats as they relate to one another, and whether you think resilience is too strong or just in the right spot, I think we can all agree that it is certainly better than recovery and mobility, and that is something that definitely needs fixing. So in today's video I wanted to propose a solution to do just that, with the added goal of providing a degree of balance theory understanding to help you understand Destiny better at a core level. I think this is important because the more you understand a game in terms of what is strong and why, the better you are able to build craft the strongest possible options when pulling up to defeat the most difficult of activities. So if learning and improvement are your kind of thing, make sure to like and subscribe because we love those things over here. Anyway, to fix stats, like literally all you have to do is if this is like a power scale, right? And this is this is like perfectly balanced. This is busted and this this is useless. You used to have re resilience here. And 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 this this is specific to what the stat intrinsically does by the way. The stat's intrinsic benefits. So when I'm talking about resil mobility and recovery, I'm not tying them to their respective class ability cooldowns. Just strictly what the stat does itself. Okay, so the way it used to be was Rezil and Mobility, both down in the useless category. And then you had Recovery kind of like, honestly, you know what? I wouldn't even say Recovery was busted. It just seemed busted because the other two were useless. So like by proxy, it automatically becomes busted. But I honestly, I, I think Recov's in a, in a perfect spot. This is before. This is after Rezil patch. Okay, this is how it is now. All you have to do to fix this is put this right here and this right here. Problem solved instantly. Automatically, the problem is solved. If you can find a way to make mobility intrinsically, uh, and like, here's the thing, right? This operation right here, this is really easy. Okay, so it's like down here, you had 0% DR. Up here, you had 40% DR. It's like, oh, wow, okay. So when it was 0% DR, it was useless. Now that it's 40%, it's busted. How do we fix this? Ta-da. You might say, oh, well, Mac, meet in the middle, do 20. I think 20 is still a little strong. I think even at 20% damage resistance, negating one-fifth of all damage, I think that's still automatically the best stat in the game. I think 10 to 15% is the sweet spot. This is super easy. Don't have to touch that at all whatsoever. This, this is a little tough. It's like, how do you do this one? I think increased sprint speed would be too strong. I think increased sprint speed would put it in this category. So you can't do that. Increased handling. If you made it good enough to be relevant in PVE, it would be in this category in PVP. So you can't really do that. So I would probably do reload speed because reload speed equals damage. If you have all three of these stats in here, in this category, then you're making every single class basically say, okay, do I want to spec into getting back into the fight earlier? Do I want to spec into staying in the fight longer? Or do I want to spec into extra damage? I think all of those are meaningful options that will make players actually choose and make players actually think about which ones they want. The problem is when you only have one stat in the busted category, it's a no-brainer on which one you choose. You have no build diversity. All reload perks would instantly become useless. Just have it stack. They can do that. AE actually makes a lot of sense. I disagree. I think it's. I think that's too strong. I think airborne effectiveness is too strong in a world where no one else has it. It, it. Because here's the thing, right? Airborne effectiveness is arguably probably one of the most important stats to have in PvP. So the problem is that if you have mobility give, let's say at tier 10 mobility, you get perfect airborne effectiveness or enough airborne effectiveness for it to actually matter. Then in the PvP version of this graph, mobility gets put up here, which again, it's in the busted category. That's no good. And it gives hunters way too big of an advantage for the same reason that titans have a too big of, a, of an advantage in the current pve sandbox right titans have a huge advantage in the pve sandbox because rezil is in the busted tier so they get to double dip into their class ability cooldown and the busted intrinsic effects of rezil by going into rezil hunters would be in the same category in pvp because hunters would be the only class that could double dip into building into a faster class ability cooldown and what would inevitably be the most busted stat to have in PvP, granting an air 
airborne effectiveness, which means war uh, hunters could do mobility, whereas a Titan and Warlock, if they also want to compete in the air, which is essential if, you're a if your opponent can hit shots on you while they're in the air and you can't hit shots on them while you're in the air, you lose. Like You can only take the fight on one axis. They can take the fight on two different axes. Or sorry, you can only take the fight on two axes. They can take the fight on three. They have the Z axis, you don't. They automatically whoop your ass. Which means hunters could just build mobility, whereas warlocks would have to build into mobility and recovery, and titans would have to build into mobility and resilience to get the same effects that a hunter's getting. You could make the same argument in PvE that hunters have it bad because our class cooldown isn't tied to resil and recov. I already made that argument. It seemed people wanted more airborne effectiveness flexibility. I mean, in a perfect world, the airborne effectiveness changes just get completely reverted but Bungie's never gonna do that so you, you gotta bargain a little bit airborne effectiveness is here to stay how do you make it so that you can build into airborne effectiveness so that you don't have to get hit by its effects quite as hard you cannot pick a solution that is tied to stats that are also tied to class ability cooldowns because that automatically makes one of the classes better than the others, right? Because if you do, okay, so you have Hunter, Titan, Warlock, Airborne Effectiveness Boost stat and class ability cooldown stat. Mobility, 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 Rezil, Rico. These match and these don't automatic problem. So if you want a solution to airborne effectiveness, it can't be that because that solution is automatically better for hunters than it is for Titans and Warlocks and they will suffer because of it. Because what this means is hunters get to focus entirely on mobility, which means for a second stat, they can maybe focus on discipline or strength or intellect. Titans and Warlocks, their second stat that they have to focus on, if they want the same effects that hunters are getting, they automatically, this has to be their second Second stat. Otherwise, they're giving up something that the hunters already have, which means they can't work on these three discipline, strength, intellect, same thing, discipline, strength, intellect. That's their third place. If you want the effects hunters are getting, play a hunter. Okay. That only works in a situation where you have something that is equally beneficial on the other classes. When you say, if you want the effects hunters are getting, play a hunter, that only works if you can also say, if you want the effects titans are getting, play a titan, or if you want the effects that warlocks are getting, play a warlock. And those effects that titans are getting and the effects that warlocks are getting have to be as good as the effects that hunters are getting. What's the M? Mobility. No, chat, the M stands for sub to Mactics. <laughs> and this M stands for become a member by clicking join down below. That's what it all stands for. Shameless pitch. Definitely shameless. I'm scared of balancing around everyone being the same because it gets rid of class identity. Problem. Rezil is too strong. Mobility is too weak. Solution. Give all stats similar general strength. How to achieve solution. Nerf Rezil to 10 to 15% DR. Buff mobility to grant an impactful buff faster reload speed stacks with other reload perks we'll say is our recommended one how does this solve the problem without ruining class identity players are forced to pick between staying in the fight longer rezil getting back in the fight sooner freak of or better dps uh weapon uptime mobility hunter titan warlock will naturally still want to spec into their respective class ability CD stats, which in turn give them intrinsic bonuses that complement the class fantasy. You also have some caveats, right? Because you might think, okay, well, listen, Mac, why can't you just buff mobility and recovery so they're just as strong as resilience? Why does resilience have to get nerfed? Because right now resilience is too strong. And if everything was as strong as resilience currently is, you would have a power creep situation where the game overall would, we would just be too powerful for the game. So we need to meet in the middle somewhere. In my opinion, where recovery is, that is a perfect middle. I think recovery is perfectly balanced. I don't think it's too strong in any capacity. I don't think it's too weak in any capacity. So how do you achieve the solution of getting all the stats to be similar strengths? You nerf resilience to be about 10-15% damage resistance, and you buff mobility so that it gives something that's actually impactful as healing more quickly and taking less damage in general gameplay. Except that a recovery mod shouldn't cost four. Agreed. All of them should cost three if they all have the same general strength. That's a good point, Summarize. Agreed. So you need mobility to actually give a buff that's actually good, actually impactful. Because right now, all it does is increase walking speed and base jump height. 
like the bunny hop. It increases mobility makes this stronger. It makes this and this stronger. That's all it does. It does not make this stronger. It makes this stronger. No one's moving like that. No one's running around the like no one's doing this. It's not very good. So my like my theoretical situ uh, improvement is reload speed. You can't do airborne effectiveness. It would be too strong in PvP. Uh, and I think handling would be too weak. You can't do sprint speed either. Sprint speed would be too strong in PvP. So this solves the problem without ruining class identity because players have to pick between one of the three stats. It's no longer just automatically, oh, I'll just do resilience. It's by far the best one. You actually have to look at your build and say, oh, do I want resilience and be higher damage resistance? Or do I want recovery? so I can like heal more quickly or do I want to do I feel like I can survive on my own without any resistance and go full on into better damage with faster reload speed the reason faster reload speed equals better damage is because if you can reload your gun faster you can shoot more bullets out of your gun within a certain period of time it's better damage so you actually have to pick you actually have to like make a decision you have to look at the activity you're doing and you have to like look at yourself as a player and your particular play style and say what do i want what suits me the best and naturally hunters they're very slippery they have their class ability they're dodging around ideally if they're playing properly they're not taking too much damage in the first place so hunters are going to want to go for that run and gun kind of play style have more uptime on their weapons do more damage that's their class identity titans they're that tanky class they're gonna they're they're, they're gonna be rewarded for going into the resilience because it makes their class ability cooldown stronger and it suits their play style titans love to be up in your face they love to be punching you they love to have a lot of close quarters warlock is the magic healing class plays in their power fantasy recovery already does what would happen if you kept rezil but buffed the other two into op territory would that just contribute to power creep too much yes you can't do that with all, without also raising the baseline difficulty of the game. There is a certain point where you can, where we can get so strong, where the game is not engaging to play anymore because we get to a point where the enemies all fall over effortlessly and we can't die. And when you get to the point where you can't die, it's not a game anymore. You're watching a movie. If you can't lose, it's not a game anymore. And I understand skill levels are of a varying range, right? I totally get that. What's one person's easy is another person's hard. I understand that. So yeah, that was the conversation we had about the current stat landscape on one of my live streams. It's a bit of a different video than what I usually do, but I certainly think it's an important topic to consider. And even if you don't agree with my takes, hopefully you still got something out of watching and enjoyed the analytical deep dive. If you like stuff like this, let me know in the comments and we can do more of these. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.